A lot happened at a recent practice for New Jersey Devils. One, Miles Wood went down with an injury. Two, John Marino and Nathan Bastian are set to return soon. And three, it looks like Jack Hughes has new line mates. And also, I want to share some more post-game interview sound bites I did with Lindy Ruff and Jesper Bratt. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credentialed media member, Trey Matthews. And to start today's episode, I have some good news, some bad news, but more good news. So today at the New Jersey Devils practice, Miles Wood unfortunately got hurt, but there is a silver lining. So it was a scary sight at first. Apparently he had to be helped off the rink and he was uh, slamming his stick in frustration and a lot of people were speculating as to maybe it's his hip because if you guys recall last year he was sidelined for all but like four or so games due to having hip surgery so people think that he might have re-aggravated his hip but the good news according to Amanda Stein she spoke to Lindy Ruff and here's what Lindy Ruff had to say in regards to the injury he said I did see it it didn't seem like it was anything major when it happened I had my eyes on him when he was skating he's making the trip so we'll see where he's at tomorrow so Here's the thing. Remember when Andre Pilat got his groin surgery and was sidelined for a few months? Well, this that that happened before the New Jersey Devils were uh, going to hit the road on their Western Canadian road trip. So the fact that Miles Wood is traveling with the team is actually somewhat reassuring just because that means that he's not going to hang back in New Jersey, get further evaluation. It's not going to be a discussion as to whether or not he needs surgery. So I'm no doctor, so I'm no trainer either, but based on my vantage point and what's happened in the past, especially this season, and com- and when comparing it to Andre Pilat's situation, I don't think the injury is anything serious. Now, I'm not sure if Miles Wood is going to suit up in the next game or not, but the fact that he is traveling with the team, the fact that he's not laying back, and the fact that uh, th- that they don't feel as though he needs like further evaluation or whatever the case might be, might be good news for a New Jersey Devil. So, the, the silver lining is Miles Wood did get hurt, but it, it doesn't seem to be that bad. And now Nathan Bastian returned to practice, and he is also traveling with the team. Now, according to Amanda Stein, when she did her line charts for this afternoon's New Jersey Devils practice, Nathan Bastian was still being used as an extra defenseman during the team's run. So uh, Nathan Bastian, he's getting closer to returning, but I still think it's going to be a few more games before we actually see him in game action once again but the fact that Nathan Bastian is traveling with the team now is actually once again very reassuring because that means he is just inching closer and closer to his return we have dearly missed Nathan Bastian on our bottom six so I getting Nathan Bastian back when we when when he first went down we didn't think it was anything that serious but uh, now having gone through the month of December and parts of January just a little bit we see like how Nathan Bastian helps with our overall depth and He is uh, greatly needed, especially since the Metropolitan Division has gotten tighter and tighter as the weeks have progressed. So Nathan Bastian inching closer to a return, and now John Marino is going to be traveling with the team. However, he has not resumed practicing yet. So if I recall correctly, John Marino has been skating on his own, but he hasn't um, uh, like returned to a full-fledged practice yet. But the fact that He's traveling with the team. I think we can see John Marino in like the next week or two because the Devils will be on the road for the next couple weeks. So maybe if not this week, maybe next week we'll get a John Marino sighting. So the bad news, like I said, was Miles Wood getting hurt. But the good news is doesn't seem to be anything too serious. And the more good news is that John Marino, Nathan Bastian are traveling with the team. So their returns uh, might be uh, sooner rather than later. So Love to see that from New Jersey Devils. Looks like they're going to be back at full strength sooner than we anticipate. Now, we're going to talk about uh, some other things that happened during uh, today's practice for the New Jersey Devils. But before we continue, I want to get you hip to a product that I literally use every day, and that's Athletic Greens. 
because I started taking AG1 because I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be healthier. My body's a temple, so I got to start treating it as such. So what is the stuff with one delicious scoop of AG1? You're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and abstinence to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. So here's the thing about Athletic Greens. It's lifestyle, very friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good, supports better sleep quality, recovery, supports mental clarity, alertness. It's one thing that's best about Athletic Greens is that it uses best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And now, I want you guys to make some extra cash, so I want you to head over to betonline.net. So, what is Bet Online? You might be asking. Well, it is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest, easy way to get all your betting info. Head to the website today, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well okay so according to amanda stein here was the line combination that the new jersey devils were rolling with during the course of their practice so on the top line you still have tatar keisha and brat for the second line you got sharon govich hughes and mercer so reuniting jack hughes with dawson mercer and yegor sharon govich once again then for the third line you got eric Halla at center Palat on left wing and Bolquist at right wing. And then for the fourth line, you got Zetterlin, McLeod, and Holtz. So the one thing that we've been that I've been preaching the over the past couple episodes is that the New Jersey Devils have been way too top heavy. So uh the fact that Jack Hughes has gone on this magnificent run is great and all, but it can't just be all on his shoulders to help the New Jersey Devils to win. Same with Jesper Bratt. He's a point-per-game player. We can't always rely on Jesper Bratt. And then for our captain, Nico Heischer, he always comes up clutch, and he's been having a big season as well. But once again, even though Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, and Jack Hughes are three best players, it is unfair that we put all the pressure on their shoulders to try to generate all the offense. Because, like I said, dating back to like late December or something of that nature – it seems like a majority of the goals that the Devils have scored have come from those three players, which, like I said in the previous episode, there's nothing wrong with that just because, like, uh, we that's what we anticipate from them because, like I just mentioned, they're our best uh, scorers. But at the same time, we need more depth. We need more options up and down our lineup. That's why I said uh, losing Miles Wood, that could have been costly for the Devils. Luckily, it's nothing serious. And then getting Nathan Bashan back. So once we, we reunite Michael McLeod, um, Miles Wood and Nathan Bastion and get the BMW line back together, that can also be very beneficial for the Devils moving forward. So depth is essential for the Devils if they want any chance of having success come the postseason. So my my overall thing is, is like I said, you need to put Palat and Hala on the bottom six. You need to put one of those two players in that position just so we have more scoring for the time being. Because I said for Andre Palat, he is coming back from injury. Lindy Ruff said in his post-game press conference that uh, coming back uh, from a long-term injury, the second game is always a little more difficult than your first game. So I'm like, if that's the case, then don't have Andre Palat playing on the top six. Have him play on the bottom six temporarily so he could get his footing underneath him. He can ease back into it. There's not too much pressure on him. He doesn't have to keep up with the likes of Nico Heischer or maybe even Jack Hughes. Now, I would like to see maybe Andre Palat reunite with Jack Hughes at some point during the course of the year because uh, early on in the year, it seemed like that Jack Hughes and Andre Palat had some good chemistry, especially during the course of preseason. So I'm perfectly uh, content with Andre Palat being a top six player but for right now, just put him on the bottom six, let him ease back into it, so that way we have more scoring options. Now, 
here's the thing for Eric Halla. He's an interesting case for a New Jersey Devil. So I found this tweet lingering around, and somebody said, looks like the Zaka Halla trade is an L for the Devils, eh? I don't know what Halla brings to this team, especially in line with Hughes. Any thought? Well, here's my thought for Eric Halla and Pavel Zaka. So you can look at the overall stats, and obviously Pavel Zaka has more goals than Eric Halla, and it seems like Pavel Zaka is actually having one of his best years in the NHL. So if we're looking at his overall stats, games played, 40. Five goals, 20 assists for a grand total of 25 points, and he has a plus minus of plus 11. So we all know how inconsistent Pavel Zaka was. We know that he sort of underachieved during his tenure with the New Jersey Devils. But when comparing to Eric Halla, Eric Halla this season for the Devils, he has appeared in 40 games, same amount as Pavel Zaka. Two goals, 16 assists for a grand total of 18 points with a plus minus of plus nine. So here's the thing for this overall trade for New Jersey Devils. So, um, I, I don't doubt for a second that Pavel Zaka is right now thriving with the Boston Bruins because one of my colleagues uh, over at Locked On, who's the host of Locked On Bruins, Ian, he says that Pavel Zaka has actually been a pretty solid X factor for the Boston Bruins. Now, the thing about Eric Kala is that, you know, I know he's unlucky. I know he gets snake bitten. But the reason why I want him on the bottom six is not because he's bad. It's actually because he's somewhat decent. Because Jack Hughes has gone on this tremendous run in terms of just putting up big offensive numbers. So if you need a comparison, when comparing both of their numbers at the halfway point of the season, Jack Hughes actually has more points than what Taylor Hall did at the 40 game mark during his 2017-2018 Hart Memorial Trophy campaign. So just to give you some reference of how good Jack Hughes has been so far this season. So we've been raving about how good Jack Hughes has been. But at the same time, no one is really giving uh, enough credit to Eric Holla. Now, we reporters during the uh, the course of post game and whatnot, we've been like pestering Lindy Ruff. Like, why is Eric Holla continuing to play on the same line as Jack Hughes? Because we do have those same questions. And overall, Lindy Ruff's answer was face off, puck possession. And just to add to that, Eric Holla is very versatile. And he does add some decent defense because, let's face it, Jack Hughes' uh, defense, not really a strength of his because he's just a little guy. So it's easy to just, like, maneuver him out the way. But digressing a little bit, Eric Hollow, you put him on the same line as Jack Hughes, you allow for Jack Hughes to just, you know, put on a show and just have that overall razzle-dazzle kind of uh, performance like we're so accustomed to seeing. But my argument is that Jack Hughes is elite. And elite players are usually very adaptable. So I said, while Eric Kala has provided some extra help to Jack Hughes's line, I still think that Jack Hughes will be just fine without Eric Kala because we saw it in the previous game against the New York Rangers because what happened? Jack Hughes was able to get an unassisted goal. And who was out there? It was Thomas Tatar and Alexander Holtz when he got his first goal of the game. Then a little later in the game when he got that game tying goal, who was out there? It was Dawson Mercer and Yegor Sharon Govich. So you're reuniting those players once again. And Jack Hughes got the biggest goal, arguably, of the season for Devils. Because if we lost to the New York Rangers, quite honestly, that could have been a slippery slope for the Devils. Because if the Rangers pass us into standings, then who knows what that could have done for a Devils confidence. So I just said that for Eric Kala, he's better suited on the bottom six. So that way he can help out some more players that just need uh, his overall production in terms of like winning face-offs or getting more puck possession. So uh, Eric Holla just provides that spark and maybe he can actually help Andre Pilat get going because Andre Pilat, like I said, is coming back from a long-term injury. So he's just trying to ease back into it, especially so late in the year with the Devils doing so well without him. So you're kind of interrupting the chemistry inadvertently when you get Andre Pilat added back into the lineup. Now, Here's a couple of other players that benefit from this change, and that's Dawson Mercer and Yegor Sharon Govich. So I told you guys in the previous episode that Christy Flannery said she would have picked Yegor Sharon Govich as an X factor going into the matchup against the New York Rangers just because Yegor Sharon Govich always performed so well against them. But the problem was going into that matchup, Yegor Sharon Govich didn't have a shot on goal uh, since the first game of the year of 2023 against the Carolina Hurricanes. So he went a couple games without attempting a shot. So I felt as though that Lindy Ruff was not utilizing Yegor Sharangovich properly. So I said, 
Maybe if you add Eric Holla onto his line, or maybe just maybe you put Yegor Sharon Govich back on the top six, maybe you can see some more solid production from Sharon Govich. Or when we're looking at someone like Dawson Mercer, Dawson Mercer, let's just face it, he's had his confidence shaken because against the St. Louis Blues, he didn't even attempt to uh, shoot when he had an open breakaway attempt. And I feel as though it has something to do with maybe his overall line mates and what he had to work with because if we look at the previous game against the New York Rangers, Sharon Govich was on the line of Jesper Boquist and Alexander Holtz. And then for Dawson Mercer, he was on the line with Michael McLeod and Miles Wood. Now, no disrespect to Miles Wood or Michael McLeod, but I just don't think they can utilize Dawson Mercer correctly because Dawson Mercer is obviously trying to fill the hole of Nathan Bastian. But Nathan Bastian, as we like to say uh, amongst fellow Devils personalities, so when the Brat Pack appeared on this show, when Jersey Joe appeared on this show, uh, they both agreed, which was that uh, Nathan Bastian is sort of that like goblin goal getter, which is he's just in the right place at the right time. But for Dawson Mercer, he he doesn't have a similar playing style in my eyes to Nathan Bastian. They both have very different uh, contributions. And I think for uh, someone like Dawson Mercer, I think he's better suited with Jack Hughes or uh, players of Jack Hughes's caliber to get the most out of his production just because uh, that's that's what we want from Dawson Mercer. We want top six production, not sort of like solid production, similar to what Nathan Bastian was doing prior to his injury. And some people are just a little worried because you guys have brought it to a lot of people's attention, which is if Jack Hughes doesn't have Eric Halla, who's going to do the face-offs? Well, here's the thing for Dawson Mercer. In the previous game against the Rangers, Dawson Mercer won both of his face-offs. Or Dawson Mercer got the primary assist on Jack Hughes's goal. So I still think Dawson Mercer uh, can still uh, help in that in that aspect because during the course of practice, Yegor Sharangovich and Dawson Mercer were both practicing faceoffs. So I get you kind of want Jack Hughes to stay away from the faceoffs, but uh, that's what we're going to have to work with. No plan is ever perfect, but in order for this to be executed correctly until we get Nathan Bastion back, until we get John Marino back, I think this is the best case scenario for the Devils, which is you just spread out your options. You get Eric Halla to contribute more on the bottom six. You ease Andre Palat back into the role. You give Dawson Mercer and Yegor Sharangovich better chances to rack up their respective points. And you still have your full-blown trust in Jack Hughes to continue to do what he can do. So I love this line change for Lindy Ruff and I think he started to listen to uh, what people were saying, which is like, look, we know that Eric Halla has been giving Jack Hughes a helping hand. But at the end of the day, I think Jack Hughes can take care of himself. And I think uh, Eric Halla can be better suited on the bottom six alongside with Andre Palat. Now, I have some extra sound bites that I want to share with you guys that I was able to obtain post-game against the New York Rangers. And basically, I asked Lindy Ruff and also Jesper Bratt, where does this team go from here? Because I feel as though that was a statement victory for New Jersey Devils against the New York Rangers because, like I previously mentioned, it was a rivalry game. There was a lot of implications going into it, which is if the Rangers win the game, then the Devils are going to fall the third in the Metropolitan Division. They put themselves behind the eight ball just a little bit more. You kind of want to build up that cushion. So I asked Jesper Bratt, like, uh, what's the production been like for Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes and also himself, and where do they go from there? You've uh, taken leaps and bounds of, of improvement. Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, where does this team go from here? Well, we're just going to have to take small steps and get better every day. It's, n it's no magical spell or anything. We just have to work hard. We have to see see the small details, how we can improve in, um, in D zone and in, in neutral zone and all these small details to continue having, uh, having success and um, drive each other to be better every day. Our big three has been phenomenal this season. Jesper Bratt uh, being a point-per-game player. Nico Heischer being uh, clutch in big game moments. Jack Hughes, what more can we say about him? Because like I said earlier this episode, Jack Hughes actually has better numbers uh, at this point of the year compared to what Taylor Hall did during his Hart Memorial Trophy race. Now, if Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl wasn't in the picture, then I'd say that Jack Hughes would have a better chance of winning the Hart Memorial Trophy. But that's a conversation for another time. So like I said earlier this episode, I'm glad that we're getting production from our big three, but we just need some more help. But the fact that they're taking it upon themselves to be leaders and just help with the overall scoring, 
I'm really happy with uh, the, the improvement that they've been able to make during the course of, of this year because all three of them have improved. It's not like they were bad, but we had high expectations and they've really lived up to those expectations. And I, I would even argue and say that they've exceeded the expectations. So let's get Nico Heischer and also Jesper Bratt to the All-Star game because we have a cult following here on Devil's Twitter. So I think it's quite possible – and, and just like we could get like pucks and pitchforks, the site that I work at, we could obviously get the Brad Pack. We could get so many other Devils personalities to try to get Nico Heischer and Jesper Bratt into the All Star game because I think they deserve it just as much as Jack Hughes. So there's no reason why the Devils should not have three representatives in this year's All Star game. If the Vegas Golden Knights can do it last year, if the Tampa Bay Lightning can do it last year, then why not? Why can't the Devils do it this year? So I also asked Lindy Ruff, like, where does the team go from here uh, after their big win against the Rangers? Here's what he told me post game. I know this uh, game wasn't uh, perfect, but it seems like you guys are regaining your momentum. Where does the team go from here? Well, we, we're going to head out on the road, and we've been a good road team. And, uh, you know, you take it one game at a time. We know our next game is another really good opponent. Uh, you know, when you, you're staring at Carolina. Um, but we know that uh, you know our road game is something that uh, we've had a lot of success with, and we would just would like to continue that. But you know, take it one game at a time. You know, we're, like you said, we're we're kind of finding some traction. We're getting some people back, and you know, we'd like to build off that because we know we're in a heck of a battle. Uh, you know, it's it's like a, about a forty game, you know playoff series going on right now between the you know five six teams the devils are a very good road team so i'm not really concerned about them going on the road so basically uh, i've said it before here's what i want to see out of the devils they just got to play 500 hockey no more getting goalie learn how to finish or my thing for tom fitzgerald is that i think you it's the, it gotten to the point of the year where it's time for you to start like picking up the phones a little bit more and seeing like how can you add to this roster so I'm a little confused. Like, what are the Devils? Are they trying to be contenders? Are they just trying to be a solid playoff team? Or if, Because we've exceeded expectations. I've said it so many times on this show. I'm certainly not complaining, but I'm just a little confused about the overall direction of the team because despite our struggles, we're still second in the Metro. And quite honestly, if the Devils are able to go on another uh, brief, like maybe three-game win streak, they could be back in first in the Metro. So we can pick up right where we left off just a few weeks ago. And obviously our next game is against the Carolina Hurricanes. So that's going to be a challenge during the course of um, these next few weeks. We're definitely going to have our fair share of battles. And I know the Devils aren't going to win all, them all, but we'll see what happens. But I just want to know what the – when we come to the trade deadline, I think we're going to get a better sense of what Tom Fitzgerald is trying to build. So if he doesn't make any moves – I think he's content with what the roster is right now and maybe try to build it during the course of the offseason to actually have a contender. Or if he makes a trade uh, at the deadline or prior to that, then I think he knows that the Devils can win now and he just needs to get some more production up and down the lineup. So even if we do get Nathan Basham back, John Marino back, or if Michael McLeod is still good to go during these next couple of weeks, I still think we can uh, afford to get one more player just to put us over the edge. So I think our goaltending is somewhat decent. Vitek Vanacek is obviously taking a couple steps back. Then for Mackenzie Blackwood, where he's still a coin flip, but Akira Schmidt might be ready to be the backup. I think our defense uh, is starting to get better a little bit because I know we've been complaining a lot, but hopefully Dougie Hamilton's big game against the Detroit Red Wings and then obviously Damon Severson's game winner against the Rangers just a couple days ago. I think those can potentially be uh, momentum shifts in, for our blue liners, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's just so interesting to see where does this Devils team go from here? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What are your expectations for Devils? What did you think about the line changes and uh, who do you think is going to have the biggest impact returning from injury? So as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. And don't be afraid to hit me up on my personal Twitter page at Trey Matt four or the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils. And like I say, for every closing episode, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode post-game against the Carolina Hurricanes. I'll see you guys then.